Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I guess it depends on where you are in the world, but we are very happy that you're here with us today. And uh, Angela, you can go ahead and start recording. Oh, it looks like she already did. Fantastic. So we have all of our wonderfully fun technical challenges figured out. We are ready to start, and we really appreciate everyone who's being here today. Uh, a little tiny bit of housekeeping. Of course, we will uh, send this out along with the deck. Uh, probably next week sometime. So if you see things that uh, made you happy or something you wanted to write down, or whatever, we will definitely be sending a recording of this um, and the, in the deck in case you want to share it inside of your organization or maybe someone who uh, missed the uh, missed the webinar. So um, let me go ahead and just uh, thank People G2 who is sponsoring this webinar. Uh, they take care of all your background checks and drug testing needs. And you can certainly visit peoplesg2.com if you'd like to learn more, but they are responsible for bringing us this free webinar series every single month. Um, and also, I have a fully uh, full remote training course, so everyone on this webinar is uh, eligible to get a 50% discount on that course. So if you're thinking about uh, providing some training or leadership uh, type uh, support for your people in dealing with remote work, hybrid work, uh, there's even lots of stuff in there that has nothing to do with remote work, just good leadership skills. You can go to my website, chrisdyer.com, and when you go to the uh, remote course, you can type in CD50 to get 50% off. All right. Um, I'd I'm really, really happy uh, for all of you. If you don't know her from my audience, and certainly there's a lot of you from her audience here today um, that uh, that know her very well, but I'm really excited to have uh, Hortense uh, Lady Gentile. I'm probably... I practiced that like 15 times. I'm probably still not getting it right. Maybe, hopefully I'm close, but um, I had her on the radio show and she is a, a wonderful thought leader. She has so many wonderful things to, to say. And I said, you know, we really should do a webinar together because I felt like we had a lot of, of synergies, a lot of things in common that we could talk about, maybe some new uh, information. And that's really what we're going to attempt to do. But she is the author of the widely acclaimed uh, book, Aligned, Connecting Your True uh, self with the leader that you're meant to be. She works with decision makers around the world to help them lead with authenticity by finding and closing the gaps between the leader they are and the leader they want to be. Her executive coaching is informed by her 30 years in business working across a number of industries, including media and consulting, advertising, and entrepreneurship. She helps CEOs, C-level executives, and entrepreneurs become self-aware and more aligned personally and professionally, leading to better workplace environments and better employee well-being and consequently increasing productivity and satisfaction. She's been invited to serve as an executive coach in the executive education program at the Harvard Business School in that little that little place called Harvard uh, and is a certified Marshall Goldsmith stakeholder centered coach and part of the MG100 coaches uh, and Marshall Goldsmith pay it forward project. She's also ranked number 13 in the World Management Gurus, Global Gurus Top 30 in 2020 and received in 2019 Marshall Goldsmith's Top 50 Top Coaches in the World. She's obviously a superstar and we are super excited to have her. She's going to walk us through the first part of this webinar and we highly encourage you to put in your chats, put in information or questions in the Q&A. I will be monitoring that. And then we'll do a little breakdown when she's done. And then I'm going to give you some of my thoughts as well on this topic. And then uh, we'll also open it up again. So there'll be a few opportunities for questions. We want to make this interactive. This is not just us talking at you. We hope that you will uh, let us know what you think. If you agree, you disagree. And if you have questions, please throw it in there. But I'm going to turn it over to her. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Chris. I'm delighted uh, to be with all of you. I have a echo. I am sorry. I have an echo again. Uh, it's not. Okay. Okay, I will try. Just give me maybe one second. I try some something. Hello. Hello. Oh, much better. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. It's no like a technical. <laughs> so thank you very much for having me. And I am delighted to be with you 
I still have an echo. Um, doesn't matter. I will try to to go with that. Um, so the world today, and we are face, facing a range of challenges. So health crisis, social crisis, economic crisis, anxiety, tension all of, all of, all around us. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to take one second again to try something because it's very hard. Okay. Make sure your headphones are chosen for oh. speaker and microphone. You got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. It's because it, I had, oh, I lost you. All right. Oh. We can still see you and hear you. You're there. You just need to maybe find the window at the bottom. Uh, okay. So I lost you completely. So you, I'm still here. Yeah, we can he we can hear you. We can see you. Okay, so I cannot see you. I cannot hear you. I hear you, but cannot see you. So great, thank you. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, I continue. So sorry, I'm very sorry. So aligned. So uh, in this time of uh, turbulence and range of challenges, so we have to be the best, best, uh, the best uh, leader we can be uh, in order to help others, right? So what does that mean to be? Uh, the best leader and this leader in this time. So this is, you know, I would like today to uh, uh, share with you some thoughts that I learned from uh, my uh, experience in uh, executive leadership coach and helping CEOs and the senior manager uh, to be the best version of themselves and to be aligned. So the first critical idea, I think, is being aligned. So what does that mean? Uh, to be aligned, you're going to ask me. So think, okay, close your eyes and think about a time or a moment where you were uh, feeling that everything was smooth, uh, easy, uh, you know, you, you felt um, at the right, right moment, uh, right path, so everything was fluid. For example, for a tennis man, it's, you know, when you are very centered and you can, you know, play with the ball and, and send the ball where you, where you want. The surfer taking the perfect wave, you know, and is on, on the wave. For me, uh, it was as a, a horse rider into jumping, uh, it was connected, uh, to be connect, well, be one with my horse. So maybe you can go next. So it was really feel one with my horse connected. Uh, so, of course, when you're with a horse, you don't use force because it's 50 kilos and, and 500 kilos. So, what, what could I do? You know, nothing, nothing bad. So, you have to ride and to be in, in confidence, both in confidence. Uh, and three steps before, you know, the obstacle, you just let go. You let go in confidence. So the horse is going to do the, the walk. He's going to jump and you are going to be with him, you know, you know, guiding him, but you don't move anymore. And, and when you know, he, he's doing the jump, this perfect jump, very round and everything, you feel like, yes, this is exactly, you know, you know, what we want to do and he unleash uh, the horse and his potential and you as well. And you look at the next obstacle, you know, making uh, him uh, be confident in, in his jump. So it's exactly the same uh, as, as leader. We do exactly the same. So, and it's exactly what we feel when we are really connected to who we, we really are. Our life is really connected to who we, re we really are, very aligned all, all together. So, this is the moment where you unleash your potential and you close the gap between the leader you are today and the leader you want to be. It's really unlock and you are able at that moment to unleash the human magic. It's exactly like, you know, the light bulb, uh, that's finally connected in a socket, uh, in electricity. Uh, it does what it is supposed to do. It eliminates the world. 
and it becomes what it's supposed to be. So this is what I mean by, you know, alignment. And as a leader, you can, of course, uh, you know, become uh, more su successful and leading with ease. So the next one. So, but how to lead uh, in this time of crisis and how to be aligned? So, Chris, if you want to, to go to the next. Okay. So, how to lead in, in a time of crisis? Not easy to stay aligned. So, I see here four steps. But the first one is take care of yourself. You know, exactly like in the plane, in time of turbulence, you are asked to put the oxygen mask first in your mouth. So before taking care of yourself, before taking care of others near you. It's exactly the same. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how can you can you do it? Can you do take care of others, right? This is it, it sounds obvious, but we don't think about it, of course, because we are very busy to help others and with many things. But it's very important. And reflect. So the next one. And reflect. So you hit this pause button for a while and you reflect. It's very, very important. So how do you want to be remembered? What kind of leader you want to be right now, just after the crisis? So, you know, think about, you know, after the crisis in one year or two years from now, how do you want to be remembered as a leader? And moreover, think about your eulogy and how you want to be remembered. What do you want people telling about you at your funeral? And if you do this exercise, you will uh, understand what is important for you. Because of course, at the funeral, people are going to talk about you as a human, not, you know, as a, the one who will increase the profit. I'm not sure, you know, that this is what people are going to talk about. So go back to yourself. What are your values? What are your drivers? What is important for you? And it's going to be exactly your, uh, your driver. You know, I have um, a client of mine who is CEO of a um, big uh, retail store. And at the beginning of the crisis, what happened? She took the decision to close the stores. And, you know, at that time, it was risky. Nobody knew uh, what could happen. But she was aligned with her value, people first. She wanted to take care of the employees, of the customer, so it was important for her. So she took that decision. And, you know, consequently, as a result, you know, the, the, the consumer and the employees felt respected. But the employees and the, and the customer felt respected, listened, you know, important. So it was, you know, in this time of, uh, you know, uncertainty, there is no playbook. So the playbook is inside yourself. And your alignment is like your compass. It's exactly when you are, you know, in the middle of the storm, you are captain of this, of this boat, but we don't know. So it's your true north, your alignment, your values, who you are, who you care about is, you know, your uh, true north. And especially, in the, again, in this time of crisis, you have to take care of people. So, so the next, the step two, so the second thing you could do is refuel. Refuel and make a routine. So what is refuel? Refuel is, you know, find the moment. So meditate, be at the present moment. Uh, so one of my clients, for example, is taking 10 minutes per day, um, having a coffee and looking at the windows and try to not think about nothing else. Um, he can, another uh, is listening to his best song. So he put, you know, the, the ears on his, um, uh, on his, uh, listening directly uh, to the ears. Uh, another one is having a, a picture. He's a fan of, uh, he's a surfer. He's a fan of, of surfing. He's having a picture of the ocean and surfing, you know, just, just, uh, at the corner of, uh, of the, of his screen. And time to time between two meetings, he's looking at it and try to refuel. So find your own way. And don't forget to close the door between one meeting to another one. So, and especially when you are on Zoom. So don't go to Zoom on Zoom and just one minute after, you know, take, take the other Zoom because you have to take time between 
you know, take at least five minutes to close the door. So what's happened in this, in this meeting? Okay. Just take a, a, a pen and write what you have in your, in your head, even if it's emotion or whatever to close the door and do, do something like a routine to stand up and maybe breathe or, you know, go around the room and, and go back here to your desk to open the other door. When you go, um, at the funeral in the morning, you don't take your grief to the wedding that is at the end of the day. So it's exactly the same. Don't take the, you know, the energy and what happened from one meeting to another one and take time, you know, take time to refuel. This is very important. And at the end of the day, what I, what I suggest is you check your alignment with your daily question. Did I do my best to communicate with my team? Did I do my best to refuel? And it's all about, did I do my best? It's not nothing about, did I achieve? No, you did, you, you're doing your best. It's like you have a, a Jiminy Cricket in your, in your shoulders, remind you, remind your brain what you decide, what is important for you at the end of the day. It works very well, you know, to uh, keep, uh, keep you on track and keep you aligned. And uh, Chris, uh, what do you do uh, to refuel, for example? Yeah, um, I really like to uh, either take a walk, right? Or what actually helps me is to um, is to really get myself organized at the end of the day so that when I walk in, that kind of gets me actually refuel, which sounds silly. But if I really prepare right at the end of the day for everything that I need to do for the next morning, I feel like I'm... I'm ready, right? It sort of like resets me at the end of the day. So when I walk in the next morning, I'm ready to go and I'm not figuring things out. So it's sort of like a nice centering exercise as well. Oh, this is fantastic. And, it, and uh, you know, it's ox give oxygen to your, to your mind also. So that's great. So I would love to know all of you who are listening, what you are doing uh, could give example to others. So that would be helpful. So thank you for sharing if you want. Um, so, Next one is, okay, we are at step two, uh, step, step two, uh, step three. So what can you do? So you take care of yourself, you refuel and step three. So can you move to the next picture? So, uh, text, you know, step three, step three is vulnerability. What is vulnerability? All leaders, we are really well trained to focus on your IQ the left brain, but we don't, we forgot the right brain. So vulnerability is all about don't be afraid of your emotion. It's normal. We are all facing emotion, especially today. Uh, as a leader, you are leading to people who are facing emotions. So sharing those emotions and listening uh, is something very, very, very important today. So if we can move to the next one. So what kind of leader we should be? We should be human and vulnerable. So of course we have, you know, this little voice who said, the left brain is telling you, don't show your emotion because you are, your education said that. And the other part say, yes, but I have to do it because if not, you know, I'm going to burn out. So the, the thing is balance, you know, find this balance. But the emotions, the right part of the brain is you know, this part who is going to be able to connect with others, you know, feel emotion, be touched. Don't be, don't be afraid to be touched by people. You know, we are all human. So we are connected with humans. So we feel something. So share it, share it. And you will, you will see that it's going to be, make the difference. So leading with empathy, be authentic. You know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. This is normal. We don't know. We cannot refer to the past. Everything is new today. So, uh, you know, for example, I have one of my clients was very, very, you know, um, uh, driven by, uh, by Brazil. So he was, you know, entering in the room before the meeting and, and, okay, we have, um, auto du jour. And, uh, uh, so today we have a question. Let's try to find answers. So what he learned during, uh, you know, it was very helpful for him to learn um, how to change mindset because it's not possible to do that today. And it was not before, but even today, 
more evolved to today because why? Because when you enter a room, even if it's a Zoom room, you have to, you know, what he did is he took time to listen to others and to care and to say, okay, how do you feel? What's happened in your house? What's happened to you? Are you okay? And he went all around the table like that, or around the Zoom with his direct team, you know, weekly and very regularly before each meeting, you know, taking care and feeling as, as an employee, feeling, you know, that you care about your employees. It's important. They are listened. And as a leader, learn to speak class and learn to listen deeply. Really, so really open your heart. If something happens, you know, don't, don't think about, you know, having the good answer. Just listen to your, your heart and share with others how you feel. Maybe you are tired. It's okay to be tired and it's good. So you are human. You are not free both. So, and it's really a question of don't be afraid to lose time because you're waste, you, you are not wasting time. You're gaining time you know, taking care of others and listening to others. So this is something that when uh, most of my clients uh, learned uh, very a lot during this time of crisis and, 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 and now. Um, so, and especially working remotely. So try to have, you know, some uh, routine, like uh, one of my clients is, uh, for, for his, his um, direct team is every day is meeting one-on-one with one of his direct team. And weekly to with everyone to be sure, you know, to be connected directly to this person and to know what's happened. And he feels that it is his role to take care of people, not, you know, to having all the answer and to, uh, because he's clear of who is deciding, is deciding what, you know, who is the decision maker. So step four. So last but not least, it's uh, about, you know, EQ. What is EQ? EQ is intuition. So this, then you can go to the next one. This um, Eden power and super power that we have. So the pop of intelligence, you know, Einstein, Albert Einstein said that the intuitive, intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. And we have created a, so- a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And this is right. When you think about it, you know, our brain receives 2,000 pieces of information per second. So you have access. We all have access, you know, to uh, this, no- this knowledge. So we have to learn to use it, to listen to it. You know, so and for that, what you have to do is to be free of noise. Because if you think, 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 always think, you cannot listen to your intuition. But your intuition is going to guide you again. And when your intuition, and when, it's not when, your intuition is connected to your alignment, to who you are. So again, that would be your compass uh, in in this time of storm. And um, it's, you know, the right brain is the avatar of emotion and uh, creativity. And what, and what we know now is what got you here don't get you there so you know what was good and right and in the past is not anymore uh, in the future so ready this you know this super power uh, we need it we need to learn to balance you know those those parts of this of, of the brain and and use all parts of the brain you know all our body parts is actually so you know the soul the 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 left, the right brain, you know, the, uh, our heart, uh, you know, our eyes, ears, everything. We need everything to live today and to live with, with purpose. And finally, the next one, finally, all that to, to say that we are, you know, leading with humanity. So this is what leadership is about today. So at the, pres- at the end of the day, you know, a company is a group of people. It's a sum of humans. So all human, all together, we have to go uh, and to, to make one, like the horse and the rider, maybe, to make one, you know, and, you know, to share this purpose, so your own connections, 
your own alignment. And as a leader, you share this alignment, what is important for you and the company with, you know, with, with your people and, and empower your people and uh, empower your employees and, and try to know what is important for them and try to make this link you know, what I, I call that the alignment of alignments with the S, because we all have to be aligned. So we all have a dream, you know, uh, something that, a, a purpose. So just find this purpose and how, so as a leader, knowing what kind of purpose so you have. So for example, we have a, the example of a, a manager in a, in a store uh, who was, uh, who asked everyone, you, what is your dream? So it was a dream. And he said, okay, I'm going uh, to try to make you do something for your dream. Maybe not achieve the dream because maybe the dream is, is, is big, but you know, they work together on, you know, on, on the dream and how they can, uh, they can, the leader can help and the, the company um, can help achieve this, uh, this, this dream or, or at least, you know, go a step to, uh, a step uh, forward to this to this dream. So it makes all the difference because uh, when you go to work, you don't go to work because you have to. You go to work because you are going to do something for your dream. So it makes sense for you. So it's your purpose. So this is what I call the alignment, so over alignment. And um, so I think it's all about be vulnerable. Uh, connect with others, lead with empathy, like we said. So be authentic, uh, leading with your intuition. So the three steps were take care of yourself, refuel, uh, you know, lead with vulnerability, and talk about and think about your intuition. This is, you know, the thought that I wanted to share with you today. Well, fantastic. And, I, you know, I think it would be great for all of us to kind of think about what did we hear and you can throw that into the chat bubble if you'd like. Uh, there are a couple questions uh, that popped up. But, you know, what I heard actually came very early on, which is that idea of trust, right? We have to be able to get to a point where we can trust the other people uh, that are in our sphere that are going to be helping us. I mean, in your example, it was trusting the horse, right? The, the horse, the, the things and the practice and all the things you go through get to the point that in a competition that horse is going to jump right? And it's not going to throw you off and it's not going to stop right before the obstacle, right? You have to get to that point where you can trust. I think that's where a lot of leaders struggle. They don't provide that trust to people in a way that makes them feel empowered and then creates further trust going, you know, going on. Uh, there was a really good question from Kate who said, uh, how do you balance the need for alignment with the concepts of stepping outside of one's comfort zone? What do you think? So how do you balance the need for alignment? Um, oh, okay. Um, it, it's something that you that 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 you can that you can feel. So going outside of of your comfort zone make push you somewhere, you know. So it, you it make it make you evolve. Uh, but you have to be sure that you are aligned with this, you know, uh, this, uh, out of comfort zone. So what I mean is make sense for you. So, and, and you are still aligned with your values, your, uh, and again, your values, what is important for you. So it's a little different for me. It's not, you know, all you, the, the thing with alignment is when you, you, you find that you, you're really connected with who you, who you are. Doesn't matter if you go, you know, outside your comfort zone or whatever wh what you are doing. The important thing is, am I still aligned? I is it making sense for me? Is it, you know, connecting with my values? What is important? You know, it's for example, is going, uh, stepping outside the comfort zone is, for example, whatever. But um, don't, you know, going to do something that say that, for example, people are not important. And for you, your values, what you want first is you want to be here for people. And the, the going to the, your, uh, you know, your outside your comfort zone is, is meaning, no, you cannot anymore for a while because I don't know what is the reason. You don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good. 
But, you know, if, you know, going to uh, outside your comfort zone is, okay, you're going to help more people, but so much people that you don't know how to do that, it's okay. You can go for it because, you know, it's still connecting with who you are. Of course, it's a big example, but just to try to illustrate the point. Uh, Aravind, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, or he or she's name. Uh, Aravind, uh, thank you. Uh, from your perspective, are you seeing leaders shift to the mindset of leading with humanity? And how far do you think we are from a major corporation taking this type of approach? Uh, is that. I think and I feel and that more and more, you know, leadership is about that. So we can see, you know, it was before. But now it's, you know, the movement was before, but now it's an obligation. You, because we all saw that, right? During, during this crisis, you know, people have, you know, we don't know what to do. So, uh, and they didn't know what to do except that, okay, take care of your people first, because it was the first reaction. So yes, yes, and yes, and yes, yes, I see more and more leader, uh, you know, uh, understood and leading with humanity, especially here in the US, especially here. But even in Europe, you know, I think we were a little behind, but yeah, it coming. So yeah, people understand right now. And moreover, with the new generation um, of uh, our, our, our children and uh, um, the new generation needs purpose. So anyway, we have to change. And there is no way to coming back, no way, because, you know, it's over the superior, uh, you know, very left brain, you know, everything, you know, going in the room and say, we're doing that, bye bye and close the door. This is over, doesn't work anymore. You know, it's really, uh, it's really, so the purpose now is to try to, you know, to all together to, to guide and to go to this new leadership, but I think we are not going to come back. So, yeah. Very good. Well, um, you know, I think that you really gave us a wonderful uh, human perspective of, you know, touching into vulnerability and EQ uh, and and really an overarching or holistic, I think, uh, approach. And I'm going to dive in here and, and give a little bit of maybe the, uh, maybe it's practical, maybe it's tactical uh, of some of the things that we're seeing uh, that can really help leaders uh, and organizations harness some of, of, of that power as well. And I really want to talk about this concept of teams versus superheroes. Uh, you know, for many years, we have been fed this constant narrative that Bill Gates did it on his own, Steve Jobs did it on his own, Cher Wang, Sarah Blake, I mean, whoever, Denise Go, all these wonderfully famous and, and, and successful people, right, that they were somehow by themselves did all of these things. And and we're looking for the next version of that inside of our companies. Well, the truth is, it was teams. Maybe these people were pioneers. Maybe they had a wonderful idea. They definitely were those things. But they had fantastic teams around them that implemented, that made these things happen. And then those people were not the face. So I would re really challenge you all to remember that our teams are really where things happen. Uh, someone can have a great idea, but a team will implement it. A team will get it done. A team of incredible people need to come together and, and move forward. And I've seen again and again and again when I've gone in and worked with companies and they say, we don't have innovation or things don't don't move as quickly as we want. And I go find out, well, there's all these little one-on-one -on -one meetings happen all the time and no one's coming together to collaborate on a more consistent basis. You know, in every one of these cases, it was really the teams that drove that long-term success. It wasn't the one person. Steve Jobs started Apple. Maybe he, he, he was a visionary. He had incredible focus. But there were so many important people that, that drove his vision to success, to, to, to us going and all getting one of these phones, right, or, or having the computers. And, and so we sometimes in organizations get really off filter, we're sort of our alignment is off because we're constantly trying to look for that one superstar and with that one person do that one thing instead of realizing that a team can do it for us. Studies have shown that partnerships, small teams, like five to seven people, and those with a team mindset like Agile and Scrum outperform superheroes consistently. There's a wonderful book called Team Genius that has all sorts of wonderful data around this that 
really kind of gives you, if you actually need the research around it. Um, you know, we, we as a business, we are in a, a team environment, and so we have to make sure that we are bringing people in from all different parts of the organization, all different walks of life, all different parts of the hierarchy to be able to help us execute on what we want to do. If we really want to harness both sides of our brain and we want people to be creative, we have to give them that space to be creative, to show them it's okay. We have to give them that permission um, and even create those signposts, right? When do we brainstorm? When do we collaborate? When do we disagree with each other? Uh, it's really important. So how do we supercharge our teams? If, if, if you agree with me and you think, well, geez, maybe I could be doing more with my teams, how do we do that? Well, this may be controversial, but I'm going to tell you, especially right now with having people work remotely, stop having one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yes, there are some meetings you have to continue to have that are one-on-one. -on -one. But for the most part, I think it's a habit we get into of, oh, I have an idea. Let me call, and you have your buddy inside the organization. You have that person that you work really closely with. Let me call them, and I'm just going to have a discussion with them. Next time, have a discussion with five to seven people and see where that goes. Get a, people, a group of people together. Say, I have this idea. What do you guys think? Let's talk this out for 30 minutes or even for 15 minutes. Magic starts happening when you do that because multiple, you get so many better ideas. There's so many extra people there to talk about this instead of, well, I'm going to talk to Tom, and then I'm going to hang up, I'm going to call uh, Nigel, and then I'm going to hang up and call Bill. I mean, get them all together very quickly to have that brainstorm. Stop having long video meetings, okay? Your, your video, video is extremely important, but if you keep people on for too long, right, it starts to really, really cause problems. So create breaks. Try to shorten up the meetings. And if you can, eliminate your video. Don't have your video on the screen. That's actually what's causing you the fatigue because we look at ourselves uh, way too much because we're worried. Just naturally we see ourselves and the natural we're worried about how we're looking and is this right. You can eliminate your video from the screen. That will really help with fatigue for everybody. And then curate your meetings in a really particular way. Figure out what's important to you for your meetings to make them successful. Now, for us, it's you got to start on time. We, with, if, if the meeting is at 3 o'clock, by 3.01, we are rolling. There is no waiting. There is no, hey, where is this person? We are starting the meeting. We are going. And if you find that your organization needs a little Kickstarter to get people to be on time, Tell them that you're going to have to sing a song of your choosing, if of their choosing, if they don't show up on time, right? Find a funny way, uh, 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 you know, with some some humor and levity, right? Not not punishing them, but you know, hey, if you show up late, we're going to make you read terrible poetry uh, or something, right? Just and and it works. I never have people late at my meetings because no one shows up late in our organization. The meetings are always on time. We make sure we schedule enough buffer time, and then we. Eliminate all of that junk in the, in the middle. Make sure you end early. This is actually an important thing called Parkinson's Law. Don't, just because a meeting's 30 minutes on your calendar doesn't mean it has to go 30 minutes. The goal should be, can we get this done efficiently? And if we can, get off early to allow people more time to go back and, and work on the issue, to think about what the, what the solution could be, create those space for them to be creative. And of course, no agenda, no meeting. We sometimes jokingly say, no, no agendi, no attendee. Um, you know, if we don't know why we're showing up to a meeting, I'm not showing up. I'm declining that meeting every time if there's an agenda because I can't be prepared. I can't possibly come and collaborate and, and feel like I can, can really help, nor can anybody else in the group if we don't know why we're even showing up to begin with. The other thing that is really important that we think about is what the role of cognitive biases are, are playing with us in, in this ability. And I think, you know, Hortense really got into some of the things. She was actually sort of grazing this idea of cognitive biases. She mentioned it was you know, 2,000 bits of data, right, that our brains are being, you know, hit with all the time. And our brains are actually trying to help us filter all this information. But our brains don't always do such a good job. And sometimes the shortcuts that our brains take otherwise known as cognitive biases, get in your way of being able to leverage the power of a really good right and left brain strategy. So what are some of those things that you should think about? 
Well, the first one is the fundamental attribution error. And th this is a very complicated one. I'm going to give you the simple version. Uh, it's a little story. So imagine you're walking down the street and someone bumped into you. They were on the phone. They didn't say, I'm sorry. They didn't say, excuse me. And they just kept walking along. This error set, our brain says, they're a rude person. And they must have done that because they are a man, because they're a woman, because they're old, because they're young, because they're this religion, because they're this race. We automatically assign that they, they must be a bad person because they did this thing to us. Now, in reverse, if we're walking down the street, we're on the phone, we bump into someone, and we didn't say, I'm sorry, we would say, well, it's because I was busy. It's because I was running late. It's because I was on the phone with my mom and she's, you know, ill right now. We would give ourselves an excuse, give ourselves a reason why uh, we didn't do this. Thing, why we're not a jerk, why we're not a problem. So we have to give other people the same grace that we would give ourselves. If someone shows up to a meeting late and it's an issue, ask why. Instead of scolding them, what's going on? Why, why weren't you able, why are you not able to show up to meetings on time? What's happening with you, right? Show them the same sort of grace and figure out what's going on in order for us to have better outcomes. But if we automatically assume that Whatever we don't like about someone is because of something we can see about them, some physical trait, right? Then we are missing an opportunity to really understand what's happening. I mentioned it earlier, earlier about Parkinson's law. We want to make sure we're shrinking things. We're not allowing meetings or tasks or jobs to fill up the time that we've scheduled it for. So always set the goal to end early. Your people will love you for this. You set a 30-minute meeting and you end before 30 minutes is up, they will love you. They will love coming to your meetings. I promise you. You go over, you push into their calendar, you show them you don't care about how much they have to do by taking over time that wasn't even scheduled for. They are going to hate coming to your meetings, right? This is a really great way to show balance and to show trust is to try to make sure we get this done efficiently. The next one is the halo effect. Now, the halo effect says there's two ways that this shows up in work. First of all, if, just because someone is attractive or someone dresses very nice or walks around with designer clothes or, or accessories, we can, our brains can fool us to say, well, they must be successful. They must be good at what they do, right? That's not necessarily true. They could just have a lot of money. The second thing is um, the second thing is really around just because someone did a good job in one area. So maybe they were really good on a particular project. Maybe they uh, a good example is maybe you have a, a top salesperson, right? They're excellent at sales. The halo effect says, well, if they're excellent at sales, they must also be excellent at accounting. Well, we know that not to be true, and that's a very raw example, right? But we can instead say, well, just because someone is good at one thing doesn't mean they're good at another. So don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake that just because they dress very nice or they're very attractive to you, that they're going to be really good at this thing. We miss out on really awesome people who have incredible things to offer that maybe just don't, we don't visually see them that way, right? We need to look at results-based, what results-based evidence and real measurement what do these people do on my team? What do their KPIs look like? How can I measure them in a very fair way to determine who should be getting the next projects? And then uh, the last one is the availability heuristic. And this is, simply says that we tend to put more weight on new information, right? Think about back when we used to go to parties, back when we were allowed to hang out with our friends, right? It's very common for us to talk about things we just heard. Maybe that article we just read, that post we just saw on social media, that TikTok we just watched, that is in the front of our brains and we tend to put more weight on that information than information we learned last week or last month or last year. New information isn't necessarily better than old information. And so it's important that we don't allow new information to, to sort of take over anything else that we have learned as well. So throw it out there and say, well, what's new and what do we know that's, that's true? What, what, what do we used to think and, and bring that out to really help people determine 
what is good, wh where, where, where is the right place for us to sit in this new idea or in this discussion? So how do we feed both sides of our brain? How do we really focus in on, on our left and right brain strengths? So make sure that we are talking to our people about tasks versus creativity, right? Tasks versus creativity. Tasks are things you need to get done, right? I need to return this email. I need to send out this, this proposal. That's not being creative. So we want our people and we want as leaders to take time even schedule time, right? One of your tasks should be the schedule time on your calendar to, to be creative. How can I make this process better? How can I reach more clients? How can I change my proposals so they be more effective, right? We need to think about these uh, things as two different things. How do we create systems, right, to create pr predictability? How do we, so people know what the rules are, but that's different than innovation. Systems will, by themselves, keep innovation out because systems want efficiency, they want things to be replicatable, they want to, you know, things over and over and over to be done the same. Systems are great, but we have to also, on the flip side, think about how could we can innovate those systems going forward in order to stay relevant. And of course, thinking about how we do something is very different than why we do something. So if you find that your team is overly focused on how we are going to do a particular project, you might want to back up and say, but why are we doing this project? Why are we focused on this? And continue to remind them about the why so that they can get the how correct. And of course, you can reverse it. The team could make, be spending far too much time on why and not enough time in the details of how we're actually going to execute. So finding that balance as a leader and helping your team to find that balance is super, super important. And then if you can, attempt to find the golden brain. Now, the golden brain is this idea that some people are left brain, some people are right brain, and there are some people who have a really good balance between the, team, between the two. Now, we can't change our team's brain chemistry, but we can try to balance things out as the leader as far as how we're collaborating and working together to create this golden brain idea, which means we have an equal amount of tasks versus creativity, an equal amount of systems and innovation, an equal amount of how versus why inside of what we're doing so that we're not overly left and we're not overly right brain in what we're doing. Now, when things get tough, this is often where I see people struggling to bring in wherever they're, maybe if you are heavy in the left brain, you're not bringing enough right brain. Or if you're heavy in the right brain, you're not bringing enough in the left. That when things get tough, it's really important to understand who you are under stress. When things go tough, when things get bad, when that horse doesn't jump over that over that obstacle you were expecting, how do you handle that? And maybe what are some of the things that you can do to cope with those bad habits that maybe you have? Maybe when the world just goes crazy, maybe you start yelling, maybe you get angry with people. What can you do to cope with that so that you're not going down that rabbit hole into some of your bad habits? And, and where can you spend more time around your strengths? So I often find where things get tough is when we're being asked to do things that we are not good at, either because we that is a personality flaw or that's because something we haven't learned or we haven't developed in ourselves, right? But where can we do things where we can really focus in on our strengths a bit more? And what else can we do to avoid tasks that are, are, are weaknesses for us? I know there are certain things that are not my strengths, and the more I do to not do those things and to instead allow my incredible team members who love doing that thing that I'm really weak at, the happier we all are. Because nobody wants me doing something I'm not very good at when they could be doing it, and I hand them some messy, you know, project that I was trying to do. It's better to allow them and to give them that trust and then come back and talk about it. So um, I really, really appreciate everyone being here. Um, I'm going to kind of bring bring my guests back in here, and we're certainly going to make sure we ask uh, answer any questions. Um, there was some really great comments in the uh, in there as well. Thank you for those comments. I won't repeat them, uh, but um, looks like uh, was there a question here? No, nope, looks like just I a few comments. So go ahead. Ew, what what did you what did we hear? So 
I hear a lot of things for myself. So thank you, Chris. You know, and then a lot. <laughs> so I just love it. So I I took some notes. So I have a, you know, yeah, we are a team. So uh, you, it's all people make 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 it happen. It's not one one person. It's all together. So yeah, humor. I, I you know, I also. Um, uh, it, it's so true. So when you uh, use uh, humor, uh, it's you know some everything is is better. It's always better beyond time. It's a question of respect, of course. You know, respect people. And I love your idea of finishing ten minutes before, or five minutes before, because it gives time to people. And it's also uh, you know a, um, a mark of uh, respect. It's really respecting people. So I just love that. I hear that. Um, um, I love also, you know, really understand what's happening with, with people because you don't know. So sometimes it can be uh, under pressure. So uh, it's all about caring people. So, you know, just just love that. I also, I love the fact that you see, you, you see people. So it's not anymore about, you know, not anymore. It's different. But before you, we used to say, I think, so I am. Uh, uh, and now it's not I see, it's I am seeing, so I exist, I am. And this is so important because when people see you, okay, again, you feel respected, include, uh, uh, and so on. And um, uh, the balance between, you know, of course, the two, uh, uh, the two brains, of course, it's a metaphor because it's not exactly like that, that it works. But yeah, all the balance of... Uh, who is more creative, not creative. I think you, everybody can learn. And also everybody can improve, you know, our, 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 their weakness. So working on the behavior or something so that you, you can change. And uh, I just love who are you um, under stress. This is so important to be aware, you know, aware of it. So this is where feedback are so important. Working on it. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Chris. And looks like we had one question here from Martha. And if anyone else has additional questions, please go ahead and type them in. Uh, Martha asked if I could go back and, and define Parkinson's law and the availability heuristic again. So I'll just do it very quickly. Parkinson's law says that if we set an amount of time to do something, we tend to take that amount of time to do it. So good example is if I schedule two hours this weekend to clean the garage, it will probably take me two hours to clean the garage. I'll move at a certain speed. I'll pick enough, enough projects to, to do, and I will fill up that time because I've set that time in my brain. But if I set the goal to end early, or if I say, instead of two hours, could I get this done in 30 minutes? And if I did, what would I do? Well, maybe I would ask my family to help. Maybe I would prioritize what needs to be clean. Maybe I could hire some of the local the kids in my neighborhood to come and help me. All right? How can you squish that time? But it's important is to remember that when we set time to something like let's have an hour long meeting, we tend to just fill it full of junk because our brains are saying, well, it's an hour meeting. We have to meet for an hour and we don't have to do that. You can back that up. Um, and so the the second thing that we do is uh, inside of the availability heuristic is basically that says new information tends to get priority over old information. And just because we learn something new, we tend to think that that's more important than something old that we learned. And that's not necessarily true, right? A new study that came out isn't necessarily more important than an old study. Uh, obviously, if the new one contradicted the old one, that would be different. But learning something new is great. We just need to balance it against what we already know as well and not pr over prioritize new information. Yeah, let's see. Um, yes, uh, someone asked uh, if this will be uh, the presentation will be available after. Yes, we will be as long as you uh, signed up, as long as you register, we will send you the full video as well as the um, as well as the slides as well. So you'll have all of that in there. Uh, there was lots of, of great comments. Thank you so much for everyone. Um, and uh, looks like um, great. So everyone's just been saying nice things. I'm just looking. I didn't see any specific questions. So, um, you know, I think we're kind of getting here at the end of time. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I thank you for, for everyone for being here. I thank you for, this, for, for sharing your wisdom. Uh, your, uh, every time you talk, I, I love listening to all, 
all the things you kind of take us down into and really uh, on a on a emotional level might be the better way to say it than even human level the emotional level so um i'll leave i'll leave the final thoughts to you i don't see uh any other questions in here so um i'll leave the final thoughts to you and thank you so much for being a part of, my, of the webinar today well, thank you, Chris. I was delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, the last thing is lead all with humanity and, you know, stay aligned, you know, think about what is important for you and, you know, always connect, you know, to, to that when you have a decision to, to, to take. I think this is the best way to do right now. And thank yeah. you, everyone, for being there. Wonderful. And again, thank you to People G2 for sponsoring this uh, a free webinar series. We have one every month. So if you're on my website, chrisdyer.com, you can always be alerted to new webinars if you sign up there. And if you signed up on this for this one, well, you'll, you'll get ones in the future. Don't worry. We have you on the list. And of course, if you're interested in a leadership course, you can get 50% off by putting in that promo code CD50. But again, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Wonderful questions. It was wonderful interaction. And we will see you next month and uh, look for the full presentation next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for your leadership, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here.